Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to continue our discussion on desktop environments and we're going to talk about GNOME or GNOME as you might hear it said. Now, first let's go ahead and talk about this pronunciation issue because some people get a little bent out of shape with it. Just like Linux is technically GNU Linux and it is GNU, um, GNOME was originally designed with the GNU projects and so the original official name was GNOME. However, because of the way languages, and they kind of didn't want, not want this giant debate about what it is, either GNOME or GNOME are technically correct according to the foundation. So I'll kind of use them interchangeably. GNOME is actually an acronym, and it was, of course, designed for GNU. GNU Network Object Model Environment is what GNOME stands for. And so that is really what this was designed as. This is the first free desktop environment, the second desktop environment available for the Linux distributions behind KDE. But at that time, KDE was not free and open source software, which caused the establishment of the GNOME project, which was established in 1997. Now, our current version of GNOME, which is GNOME 3, was first released in 2011. Now, this is a very controversial desktop environment, and there's a lot of debate and discussion. Some people saying it absolutely sucks. Even I have a video saying five reasons why I don't really care for the GNOME desktop. But it is a great desktop for what it is and for what it's supposed to be because it kind of follows this philosophy. There's a little bit of a difference. Should our desktop always be looking like a Windows? Should it always be looking like a Mac? Should we always have full functionality and full feature in our desktop environment? This is some of those things that the GNOME project seeks to address. Now the thing about the GNOME project is it is very highly supported by the newest features in hardware. We're talking hardware stuff, touch screens, Wacom tablets, a lot of these other types of devices, but we're also talking about online accounts. We're talking about privacy controls. GNOME features functionality for all of these types of things. Now, as far as the GNOME desktop itself, it is available on nearly every distribution. Even if there's not an official flavor, you usually can install the GNOME shell and the GNOME applications into any given Linux desktop so that you can have this particular desktop environment. Now, the downsides, GNOME is actually very heavy on system resources. So if you have a lower spec machine or something that's kind of older and sluggish, you probably do not want to run GNOME on that particular computer. Computer. Even though they've been streamlining it down and cutting the resources, they do have it down. I still found that even if you can keep the memory usage a little bit lower, it still is a little bit sluggish in a lot of its results. And so with that being said, if you have a low spec computer or an older system, you probably don't want to try and run GNOME on it right out of the box. So the desktop environment itself is very minimal in feature light. We don't have desktop icons and it doesn't have the easy ability to put them back in. It doesn't have a lot of the other things that might make the system feel complete. But the good news about the GNOME desktop is it is extendable with third party extensions. There are third party extensions hundreds and hundreds of them, which are all vetted by the GNOME team, and you can do with these anything you possibly want. Now, this does introduce its own issues. So there was a targeted attack to GNOME desktop environments through installing GNOME extensions that were not specifically authorized and on the GNOME extension uh, website. So somebody could get in there and install a rootkit and a Trojan into your computer by installing a rogue extension. So you always have to be careful to get your extensions from trusted sources. But the advantage of the extensions and the GNOME desktop itself is you can start with a very, very minimal desktop that has nothing and then use these custom extensions or write your own extensions to get every functionality and feature back into the desktop that you want. Some people People look at that and say, well, that's a little, little over the top. And some people say, well, that's exactly what I want. Now, the other thing about the GNOME desktop, some people say, well, you know, I'm not sure about for the computer, but man, this would be great for a tablet. Well, that's actually simply not true. The first reason is tablets are generally not high spec machines and GNOME does not run super well on low spec. In fact, one time I got one of these little 
key, keyboard detachable tablet slash PC things. I'm like, I want to see about GNOME because I think this would be great for a tablet. <laughs> I could get GNOME installed on it. It just did not work well at all because the thing is so low spec and most of your tablets are. But the fact is, the reason GNOME is not a tablet-based desktop environment, even though it looks like it, is because GNOME is actually designed to use with keyboard commands. Their task was to get away from using the mouse and multiple different user interface inputs and instead focus on a highly proficient keyboard basis. So if you think GNOME sucks, it probably means that you have not taken the time to learn the keyboard shortcuts and commands. If you have taken the time to learn those commands, GNOME actually really shines. It shines the best when you can use those keyboard shortcuts as they were intended to and use the desktop in that type of minimal environment with the keyboards. It becomes this amazing thing. And so when you are using the GNOME desktop, you want to take the time to learn those keyboard shortcuts because that is the thing that makes this desktop shine. When you understand that, the GNOME desktop becomes one of the most amazing computer experiences you have although it still may not jive with your individual workflow, like it personally does not jive with mine. So I don't personally use GNOME on full production machines as much as I could, just because I don't like the workflow, but I can't say it's a bad workflow because it's a very good flow for people who are keyboard uh, focused uh, individuals. So overall, to wrap up the GNOME desktop, there, the major pros about the GNOME desktop it is it is very minimal. If you like minimal, if you like no distraction working, GNOME is absolutely the best desktop for what it does. The second thing is that it is highly extensible. Hundreds and hundreds of different extensions are available for the GNOME desktop. So you can make it into anything that you want it to be. And then number three is it is highly, highly modern. Beyond a question of a doubt, GNOME is the most modern desktop environment. Now you might need the most modern of PCs to make it work well, but it is still very modern. The privacy controls you come to expect, it has plug and play feature with tablets and a lot of other features. It can use your touch screens, various audio inputs, outputs, all of these modern features, including the integration with online accounts. So GNOME has a lot of great pros to help it along. The very, very thing that makes it good though are also some of the cons to the system. The biggest cons with GNOME is that it is very different. If you are used to a Mac, if you're used to a Windows computer, if you're used to the general way desktops are laid out on a computer, you will install GNOME and go, I don't know what to do with this because it's very different. But again, you take the time to learn it, that con kind of disappears as long as it's what you want it to be. The second is it has very little native function. I personally do not like installing a lot of third party parts to make things work. And so for me, this is a downside. I want to install a desktop environment that I don't have to fiddle with that does what I expect a desktop environment will do. GNOME does not have that. The very little native functionality is excellent for the people who do not want a lot of those distractions, but it's not good for a person who actually wants that functionality into their system. And the third con, which is getting a little better, bit better, but still, GNOME is among the heaviest resource consuming desktops, which means you're not gonna run GNOME comfortably on everything. You're only gonna be able to run GNOME on things that comfortably have four gigs or more of RAM, which, is most computers these days, so it's not a huge con, but still, it is gonna be heavy on resources, and even if your computer could run it, you might need to save up and free up some of your resources for resource-intensive applications like 3D animation or a lot of, of more high-end graphics work. In that case, no may not be as good because it is gonna take more system resources. But all of that being said, that is the basic overview of GNOME. The first free desktop environment, the current version was released in 2011. It is highly supported with new features, online accounts, privacy functionalities, and it has the ability to extend it. It is available for most distributions, but it is a little system resource heavy. So keep those things in mind when you are considering the GNOME desktop. 
Thanks for coming along on this video with Switch to Linux. Have a look at the links in the description down below and have a look at the website at switchtolinux.com for more tips and tricks on switching to Linux.